Hey everyone, welcome back to Finance Rocks. I'm really excited to have my friend Courtney on the channel today for a little interview. Courtney, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm really excited. I think uh, I think that you're very frugal and I'm excited to share some of your tips for, you know, kind of being frugal with kids and, you know, the, the things that you do to save money. So one of the questions that I really <laughs> to ask you is what do you want your kids to know about money like what do you think is important for them to know so that's actually a really difficult question um i have like a thousand different things that i want them to know but most importantly i think that so part of what i do personally with my finances is i try to separate what i want from what i actually need and I hope that they bring that into their lives when they're older and responsible for their own income. Um, I guess like, I want them to know that money is not the most important thing in the world, but that it is, it's necessary to survive. And I want them to be able to handle it responsibly for that reason. I, think. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it was a really hard question. It took me like forever to think of like, the top two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is because like you said, you know, it's important. It, not everything. I agree with everything you said, you know, it's, it's not everything, but it is an important part of life. And it, it's like, if you don't have that part of life under control, it kind of affects everything else, like makes right. for harder relationships and can affect you in other ways. Right. I really where, like, oh, go ahead. Where you're living, what like the kind of life that you live, like if you're constantly struggling to put any money into your savings, then any kind of disaster that pops up is just completely going to break you. And it's, it can get scary. It can get scary, especially with such a big family. And I really like what you said about like wants versus needs too. I've been thinking about that a lot lately from kind of the perspective of how out of touch Americans are with like, what our needs really are like our basic you know we use the the word need so much i always say like using the word need inappropriately um yeah. like I, I mean even just thinking about like my phone and how i don't want to like need my phone you know because that's a, that's a want yeah and the more like you can admit that the that your wants are wants the better you feel like you feel like you have you know above what you need which is the truth then yeah, definitely. I feel that way a lot. And whenever I start to get owly about what I don't have, I remind myself of all that we do have. And, you know, it definitely helps yeah. build the list of what you actually need. Yes. We need a roof over our head. We have it. We need a reliable vehicle. We have it. It's not the fanciest vehicle in the world, but it gets us around safely. And that's what matters. Yeah, I love that you know, food, clothing, shelter, water, you know, really getting a sense of gratitude for those things. I think, mm -hmm. I think that uh, is important for living a frugal life because then, you know, you can, you're grateful for what you have. And so that kind of reinforces, oh, I don't need a lot more because. Yeah. And in turn, you save money because the less you feel like you need, the less you buy. Yeah, excellent. Are you already starting to, this wasn't one of my prepared questions, but I just thought of it. Are you starting to notice differences between your kids and like how they use resources and money? Like, are they already kind of adopting their own personalities with money? Yeah, I, I suppose so. I had never really thought of it before, but um, our seven-year-old will tell me, oh, I don't need any money. I have enough money because he has money in his piggy bank. And so he's like, it is what it is. I'm not going to do that chore because my time is worth more than your dollar. And my oldest will like jump at the chance to earn a dollar. Um, and, but like the boys would both spend their money a lot faster. And my older girl, Kaylin, she would, she would save her money. She would never spend a single dollar. I don't think she's ever spent a dollar of her money. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I got a little saver. Yeah, a little saver. And the youngest throws her money all over the house. <laughs> you have it. So. <laughs> Making it's not going for me. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> she's just making it rain so early. Yeah, it's true. That's funny. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. I've, I've been curious about how, like, how those different kind of personalities or, like, different habits develop, and I, I mean, I don't know, you know, how it is. Like, I, I wonder if there's, like, little micro, like, situations that happen at just the, like, right or wrong time that make us, like, tend towards different habits with money. Um, yeah. Like, if you happen to, like, see something you really want, but you don't have enough in your, like, purse for it, like, you know, does that affect it down the road? Yeah, makes you want to save forever so that you do have money when you see something. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, if you happen to, like, be like, oh, I wish I had some money, and then you just, like, happen to get, like, gifted some money or find some money, if it just imprints at, like, just the right time, and then you're like, oh, there's money everywhere, and then you have more yeah. abundance compared to scarcity. Yeah, that's very true. I, I don't know. I'm curious about it. <laughs> um, so then I was kind of hoping we could go through kind of like the different categories of spending and see kind of what you do in each category um, for saving money. And I did come up with a few things too, like a few observations that I've made okay. about, you know, things that you do. But I'm curious from your perspective. Let's talk about like kids stuff specifically. Do you have okay. any like what you do specifically for kids to save money, whether that's like clothes or toys? Yeah. Um, so I had to make notes because I, yeah. So if you see me looking down at my notes, don't mind me. Um, I do know that we have a lot of activities that we enjoy doing that are free. A lot of these activities did not include COVID rules. So this last summer looked a lot different. This whole last year has looked a lot different. We've had to be really creative um, as far as figuring out what to go do and be safe and keep our distance and all that. But before COVID, <clears throat> we really liked going to the public library. Um, the kids loved checking out books and there's like a little, there's a little play section in there uh, with Legos and blocks and they loved going in there and playing. I mean, sometimes we could spend like two hours in there and they'd still be sad when we left. Um, there's the splash park. Uh, I think a lot of communities have a splash park or somewhere close by. Uh, it's a water park that's just for free and that's really fun. Again, they could spend the whole day there and be happy and we would pack our own snacks and it would cost zero dollars. Um, we love to visit duck ponds and the playgrounds around town. Um, in the winter, there's sledding, which costs zero money. I mean, you have to buy a sled the first time, but other than that, it kind of pays for itself with all of its free goodness. Uh, Did you just say well, What? Did you just say free goodness? Free goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I love it. We also really like to go to the museum. We go to the Museum of Rockies probably five or more times a year. And if we went there and paid each time that we went, it would be about $50 just for all of us to go for one time. So we go ahead and buy a membership, $80 for a whole year. And then you get to go, you know, as many times as you want. And there's a, there's a play area in there. There's the planetarium. There are exhibits that change every few months. And then there's the dinosaur exhibit that's always there. Um, so that provides a lot of entertainment. We do save a lot of money by buying secondhand clothes from thrift stores. <laughs> um, we always say yes to hand-me-downs from friends. Even if there's stuff in there that we're not gonna use, we can always pass them on to the next person. Um, and that's good for the environment too. So I like to do money-saving stuff that has multiple uses like good for the environment and saving money or fun for the kids and saving money <laughs> um it just gives it that extra bit of thrill i guess yeah. i don't know the thrill of saving a dollar <laughs> I, I love that so much courtney so Yay. much because i i really feel like in order to be kind of like for it to be sustainable it has to be kind of meaningful like I think one way that I could save money is to change the oil in the car myself, which I've never done before. 
<laughs> and I'm like, I just do not want to do it. And there's like nothing like, I don't feel like there's really a, any other benefit than saving money. And so it's been really hard to force myself to do it compared yeah. to things like hang drying my clothes, which I feel good about doing because it saves money and uh, better for the environment because you use a little less electricity. So I always like to call that um, synergy with your values. So just okay. like, you said, like, yeah, saving money and having fun with your kids, saving money mm -hmm. and better for the environment, saving money and healthier. Anytime you can find like good synergies between those, those are the ones that'll stick and kind of lead to like a frugal and happy. Oh, you, you sent me yeah. off the... Because <laughs> you you, you're more motivated to do it and you just feel better about it. So then it makes you want to do it more. I see what you're saying. I and like that too. And I think that it also helps if like you have friends and family members that don't like under like that, that can't really relate to your money goals. If you like are like, oh, I can't do that or I'm doing this instead. It kind of gives you another reason to give mm -hmm. to people that don't like that aren't prioritizing their finances. So yeah. like, oh, sorry, I can't go out to eat at a restaurant with you. Um, because I'm trying to be healthier and pack my lunch, which also saves money, right? So it's kind of stacking right. up the reasons. And so you're very um, environmentally conscious. I, I can't say that. Conscious? Conscience. Conscience or conscious? I think it's conscience. Conscious. conscious. I think it's conscious. Conscious. It sounds weird. I have the same problem with that word. <laughs> um, so because that's something that you value then, then mm -hmm. saving money and better for the environment. That's mm -hmm. like more meaningful for you, right? Yes, definitely. I have on here, I have, oh, buying movies at home instead of going to the movie theater. You mean like <laughs> downloading, streaming? Um, well, even just buying a DVD from the store for $20 is still going to save money rather than all of us going to a movie theater. There are six of us, so it costs about $65 just in tickets for us to go to the movie. And that is just so much money. Um, and of course, we have to get the popcorn and the soda, and before you know it, it's $100. Uh, when we could buy a $20 movie and some candy and popcorn for home, and then we have that movie to rewatch. I mean, we definitely like to take the kids to a movie every once in a while but it's not something that we rush to go do because it's just too much money and we like having our movie collection so and you guys do have like netflix you yes streaming? yep we have netflix and amazon prime so oh and disney plus oh that's a good one <laughs> i also cut my family's hair yay <laughs> haircuts yeah it saves hundreds of dollars a year just by me cutting their hair and my husband cuts his own hair because whenever he wants a haircut he just shaves it um i'm actually the only one in the family that gets my hair cut professionally and i only do it once a year so do you do your own like trims yeah i'll cut the ends of my hair probably a few times a year but yeah. i don't want to do my own layers <laughs> i learned my lesson yeah you did such a good job on the kids' with haircuts. Like, well, thank you. Usually, like, I mean, not usually. Sometimes you can tell when someone has a home haircut. I don't know if you can tell right now, but. Um, no, it looks pretty. <laughs> but you do such a good job. And now you were doing home haircuts before they were cool, too. It's true. I've done them their whole lives. So. Yeah, not just for the pandemic. 12, yeah, 12 years, nine years. Yeah. How did How did you get into that? Like. How did you learn? Did you just like look it up online or just practice? Um, I just started cutting <laughs> with my husband's shaver. Uh, he has different uh, blade guards, guards, that's what they are, okay. So I just started cutting their hair with the uh, different guards, the different size guards, and it was kind of like a hit or miss in the beginning. But I've always liked doing hair. I used to dye my own hair and friends' hair, and I used to cut my own hair. I only, I only started going to the salon like two years ago, I think, for my own haircuts because my layers were so out of control. <laughs> but 
Yeah. Yeah. Just practice, I guess. Cool. Thanks. Um, maybe that should be a follow-up video, uh, DIY at home haircut. <laughs> For, Ooh, that'd be fun. <laughs> um, I, I started practicing haircuts when I was a kid. I used to practice on my little brothers too. Just giving yeah. an actual, what I mean like when I was in high school. I probably cut their hair when I was much younger too, but <laughs> might as well. Might not have been so great. Not, might not have been so great. Um, I've noticed that you guys do a lot of like crafting at home. Like you guys seem to really like to like get stuff out for the kids and do paints together. And um, I have uh, one of your projects right here. So oh, cute, Delilah. She's so cute. The rocks that you guys painted for me, and just like little things like this. Like you know, it's painted rocks, and so like the cost involved is very little. But I'm sure you guys had a ton of fun doing it, and I love the little rocks. So <laughs> I'm glad that you love them. We do love painting rocks. Yeah. We have plenty of paint here because I myself love paint. Um, and so whenever we paint jars and cans and bottles and all sorts of things, just kind of making old things into new things. Trash to treasure. Yeah. Gives them something to do too. Yeah. Be creative. I love it. All right. Um, what do you do for like saving money for the household? I think a lot of the money that we save around the house is food related. Um, we don't, we don't eat out very often. We try to make it a special occasion thing. Um, and there are actually restaurants that do kids night where your kids get a kid's meal for free. Um, so if we do go out to eat dinner, we like to go out to places that are kid friendly and have good deals for them too. Cause then we're not spending hundreds of dollars on one meal. Um, we make our own coffee at home, which I actually did the math on, and we're saving $4,000 a year just by making our own coffee at home. <laughs> that blew my mind when I did that math, like buying yourself and your significant other one coffee a day will cost you $4,000 a year, minimum. I mean, that's like without it even being fancy. That's just so crazy. <laughs> I, I, it happens to everybody. Like when I add up stuff like that too, like little things don't like those little costs don't really feel like big a big deal, but four thousand dollars is no small chunk of change. So like it's, it's a big it's a big savings just by making your own. Um, same with lunch. I pack a lunch every day for my husband and that saves about $12 a day, you know, because he would, he was just buying his food from the gas station and gas station prices are out outrageous. Uh, and it's healthier. So that's another one of those synergies. Energy. <laughs> yeah. Um, cause gas station food cannot be that healthy for you. All the processed stuff, meal planning and meal prepping that helps save money when you're at the grocery store. Uh, when you have a specific list, going in, then you tend to spend less money on just throwing things in the cart. Um, I actually had a throwing things in the cart day just yesterday, but it was all mostly things that I could put in my pantry, um, you know, for those cold winter days where you're almost out of groceries and you don't want to go to the store, then you've got some canned goods in the uh, cupboards. So you, but, have, so you have some recipes then that are kind of like your backup plan? Yeah, like I'll, I'll keep things around for spaghetti or chili or red beans in the freezer or the cabinet just for when my meal planning just doesn't go as planned. Um, but yeah, meal planning saves a lot of money because, and also doing your shopping once a week instead of every day seems to save a lot of money too. Um, I'm not even really sure how technically, but I know that when I go in just for a day and spend $50, but then I go in once a week and spend 200, it just, you know, it works better. Yeah. Less yeah. opportunity to buy random things. Yes. Less opportunities for like impulse spending. Right. Yeah, I, or being hungry and going to the store buying that extra food just because you want something to munch on yeah. and yeah I have to have a list 
lists for the grocery, meal planning. Meal prepping, having like backup, like mostly like uh, recipes that you can use that are kind of out of the pantry instead of like requiring the fresh ingredients that you might be out of to prevent, to like kind of extend your grocery shopping trip. Right. Yep. Yeah. So like by day seven, we might be doing mac and cheese and some meat out of the freezer or something. Um, and my kids are begging me for apples and bananas and I have to go back to the store because we're out of fruit. Yeah. But I try not to go to the store unless we're out of fruit, fruits and vegetables, which is usually about a week. Yeah. So. But one of the questions I wanted to ask you too is, um, do you believe that you can spend less, that you can have affordable meals that are also healthy? Yeah, I think that, well, like my chilies and stuff, I think that that is a good way to have a healthy meal. I mean, beans have a lot of vitamins in them and protein, and I, I put a lot of veggies in there. And my chili probably costs about six dollars to make. And then if I make it vegetarian, it costs probably three, maybe four, um, depending on how big of a batch I make. But yeah, I do. I do think that some of them, or even like salad, we have a lot of different salads that we eat. Luckily, my kids really love salad, so it makes it easier. They actually like their vegetables. Um, yeah. That's, that's great. And I just want to ask because a lot of people believe that you can't buy healthy food that's also cheap. Um, and so I just, I like to try to like break that, you know, I, I mean not. There, there is a stigma around healthy food being more expensive. Um, yes, I've experienced that even myself. And sometimes it's true uh, with like vegetables. If the organic green peppers are going to be $2.50, I go ahead and buy the non-organic ones, um, depending on the day, really. But whichever one looks fresher. But like if the non-organic ones are fresh looking, then I have no problem buying that instead of the organic one. At least that way we're still getting the vegetables. Yeah, I like that you kind of have like different strategies or like different you have a method that allows you to do like some of each or like alternate like maybe the organic ones are on sale or right. um you know i found that a lot of the times like everything is it seems like they're trying to make everything organic these days like i yes. very like eat, i was like oh these bananas are are organic even though i didn't mean to buy like that was just the regular big display mm -hmm. um so that's been kind of nice and then like i try to do it strategically like some foods I try to buy organic if there is a, a you know a comparable option even if it's a little more like strawberries mm -hmm. I say that those tend to be like dirtier fruit because you eat the skin compared to like a banana where you don't eat the peel so if anything is on it you're pretty safe so that's just my strategy on it I don't know yeah you have to be creative and you also have to be able to be flexible because if you get to the store and you're like I really want these green peppers, but they're $3 a piece, like, it's going to be okay if you get the one that's only $1.50. Mm -hmm. um, that one green pepper is not going to yeah. ruin everything. Is it like pros and cons and weighing, you know, kind of what's important to you versus, you know, it, trying as much to get the value for it? I was thinking about that earlier, um, about finding a balance uh, when between saving and spending. Like, don't make your, I try to save as much money as I can in all of the departments that are fun and easy for me. And then if I do spend money on something that is, doesn't seem so frugal, then I feel a little less guilty about that item. Uh, this year we had to buy school books for the kids and I let myself buy those guilt free because we needed them. And, you know, yes, it was a, little more expensive than what regular school supplies would be but I'm not going to let myself feel bad about it because yeah. I save money on other things and yeah there's definitely a balance. Okay love this I'm writing this down as a future video idea managing guilt because I mean it's something like when I was like paying off debt I felt guilty every purchase I made no matter what even if it was for food 
you know, yeah. even if it was like paying for my car, just like guilt about everything. And mm -hmm. I really think that like, kind of like what you said, you know, sometimes you have to give yourself permission to not feel guilty, right? About right. That. And, um, you know, kind of do what's important and then like being able to prioritize those and, you know, kind of minimize spending on the rest of things. And then like, yeah, the, the ultimate goal should be to like be able to spend on things that you value and not feel guilty about it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. <laughs> And, and, you know, like even impulse purchases, like, you know, kind of giving yourself some leeway to not feel guilty about things that are like impulses or non-necessities or... Like the dollar section when you walk into Target. <laughs> dollar spot. Ugh, it's the worst. <laughs> is that like, a... Oh, is look that at all this cute stuff. Temptation for you, Courtney? Yes. <laughs> Glad I haven't been going to Target lately. Yeah. That is another thing. If I, if I know that, that I'm going to spend a lot of money when I go somewhere, then I try to go to different stores. Like where else can I get the things that I need from Target just to avoid going in there? Because I know that if I go in there, I'm going to spend way more than what I originally planned on. So yeah. And that even makes it feel more of a special treat when you do go, right? And then you get yeah. even more bump and happiness when you do get to go. It's true. So you have a precious doggy, Bailey. She's very sweet. Very sweet. Very, very loud, but very sweet. I wish I was scratching her right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you do to save money on pet costs? So she has food allergies. I'm pretty sure she's allergic to herself at this point. She has to get... She has to get shots like every two months for her allergies. Otherwise her skin is hot pink and we just, we've tried everything. She's 10. My point is we have to spend a hundred dollars per bag on her dog food, which is insane. But it's the only food that we found that doesn't make her miserable. So we're thankful for it. Um, but in exchange, I go ahead and clip her nails myself. Um, I actually, so hold on, I think I have the math here. I, oh, I figured out that just from clipping her nails and bathing her myself, I save about $600 a year. Ooh. So, yeah, that's nice. And it makes me feel less bad about her $100 bags of food. Um, but I've been clipping her nails her whole life. A lot of people are afraid to do it. I know, it's a scary thing, but she's very good for me. So. Yeah. And you, uh, you walk her yourself? Oh, yes. I don't pay anybody to walk her. My kids clean up her poop for free. Nice. <laughs> for free. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's one of their chores. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's really all I had for Bailey. Yeah. yeah. Just the grooming. Do you, so we just gave, uh, Jet his first bath in literally, like, five years. Oh, my God. <laughs> And it's only because he got, like, really muddy. Yeah, I think she gets, I mean, we don't wash her as often as we probably should. But she gets a bath, like, probably every three months, except for in the winter. The winter is, in the summer, she gets a bath, like, once a month. But, because I can do it outside and it's warm. Do you coupon? Do you use coupons? Oh, yeah. So when I'm grocery shopping, um, I do use coupons. I become a member at all of the stores that we shop at. Uh, that gives you the special deals. It's, I mean, it's super easy to just type in your phone number when you're checking out and it ends up saving quite a bit of money. Um, I did not actually do the math on that, but I know I save on average between 30 and 70 just by couponing and sale shopping um, and then using those store member discounts. Mm -hmm. Uh, Smith's will actually send you coupons in the mail that are of things that they know that you buy regularly. So that's really cool. The more you shop there, the more they give you free stuff. Um, sometimes we get free milk from them. Sometimes we get free, like four dollars in free vegetables. Or yeah, so we do really like to coupon. Mm -hmm. Not 
not physical paper coupons unless they get come to me in the mail. Um, but as far as like sale shopping and discount shopping and all that goes, that is definitely helpful for us. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people like that's their like gut. That's like the first thing they think of when, when people talk about like saving money on groceries. So I feel like if people are like, oh, I don't want to hear this because I don't want to use coupons. <laughs> but you know, a lot of frugal people don't. Um, yeah. you know, honestly, I forget mine in my wallet. Sometimes. <laughs> like I'll have them and I'll reach in to pay and I'll forget to hand them the coupons. Mm -hmm. It's just so hard to remember to hand them to them. Yeah. But we did, we, I just started using like the Albertsons kind of like you just mentioned where they like give you coupons for things you frequently buy anyway. And it's great. They just send you an email and you just go through and like clip, 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 clip. And then, oh like, yeah enter your email as it, it just to subtract it off. So it's super easy. Um, yeah, that's been great. Um, that sounds pretty easy. Yeah. I know that Safeway has an app. My mom uses the Safeway app and that's the same thing. She just clips her coupons while scrolling through on her phone. Yeah. Takes like three minutes once a week yeah. to just scroll through there. So I, I didn't use coupons for, so I went through a little phase where I tried to do the coupon, the paper coupons from the paper and everything. This was mm -hmm. like, 10 years ago and uh, did that for a little while, but then I didn't do any couponing for years and years. And I was like, oh, you know, we're still below average for like the spend for spending for our, our household. So, um, yeah. Cool. Uh, so, another thing people often think is that frugal people just don't spend any money. So I'm curious, what do you like to spend money on? And I think you've mentioned a few things already, but like, what, what's your favorite thing to spend money on? Or like, what things do you like, like to indulge with? That's a good question. I love candles. I try really hard to not purchase them. I went through a candle phase, like, probably 18 months ago where I spent way too much money on candles. And so I have grounded myself from that mm -hmm. for a little while, but I am like out of candles. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to need to just stock up again. Yeah. Uh, I read tarot and I really love buying new tarot decks. My husband always says, why do you need so many? They all do the same thing. <laughs> No, they don't, do they? But they don't. No, they they're don't. all different. That's, I told them they all have their own special thing about them. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm, I think I'm done buying my decks. I have like probably ten. Uh, mm -hmm. But every time I say that, I come across another one that's on sale. But again, when I buy my decks for myself, they're usually on sale. Mm -hmm. I don't buy them unless they go on sale, because that makes me feel less guilty about spending that money mm -hmm. on myself that's the thing the guilt is real guilt is real <laughs> but I definitely do spend money um yeah. randomly you know if I see a cute pair of leggings while I'm grocery shopping I buy them not gonna lie <laughs> but, yeah I just try to limit the amount of things that I randomly allow myself to buy because I don't need them mm -hmm. I might want them but I don't need them yeah so no, that's good. Um, yeah, I, I just think that it's good to acknowledge that like it, you don't, it doesn't, frugal doesn't mean not spending any money. Right. That's, that's what I and believe. My, yeah. And my kids, we let them buy random video games, you know, if they have, if they've had good behavior or something and they ask for a game, why not? Yeah. Especially with COVID, it's a lot easier to say yes, because we're not spending money on dance class or taekwondo. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Kind of just a reallocation then of like activities and entertainment. Right. So yeah, COVID has spent, has saved us a lot of money, <laughs> I guess, because we haven't been able to go anywhere and spend money yeah. on anything. Traveling, yeah. activities, like you said. Yeah. yeah. Dance class is expensive. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've talked about um, some of the ways you save money. Do you have like kind of an idea of kind of overall about how much per year you save on these different types of savings? Oh, yeah. Um, so with all of our 
grocery shape grocery grocery shape. <laughs> <laughs> oh god tell me about your grocery sh shaving <laughs> okay so with our grocery savings and packed lunches and reusing jars and bottles and things for art projects and all of the previous things mentioned um our grand total was about eight thousand dollars a year um, and that also includes with us not having a car payment. I have that on here. Um, our car payment and our mortgage. We worked really, really hard and we saved really, really hard for a long time to be able to move into a home that we could purchase instead of rent. Mm -hmm. um, I should have wrote down some of those money saving tips for you because we were really frugal then. Uh, but we're spending less money on our mortgage than we were on our rent previously. So that helps a lot. It also takes off a lot of stress. Um, and then our car, I have a Honda Pilot and we didn't, we opted to not do payments. We got a small loan from the bank that we were able to pay off in a short amount of time so that we could just have it paid off and not have to pay like that three, $400 a month. <clears throat> and Again, that's like what you want versus what you need. Like you want a really shiny, beautiful convertible, you know, but you don't need a $700 a month car payment. Yeah. So you just have to, you have to really be strict with yourself on what you want and what you need. Mm -hmm. That's what helps me the most. <laughs> Do you, um, do you mind sharing like the total cost that you paid for that? Cause you just got that like last year. Right. Yeah, we got it in the spring because my explorer finally died. May it rest in peace. Um, it, I think it was six grand. Okay. So and, I mean, yeah. it was still it was still a good amount of money. Yeah. But we bought it from like a private seller, so he has a dealership license, but he was a private seller. He just had to get the, the dealership license because he was selling too many cars for it to be a personal thing. Um, I forget what he called it, but anyways, so it wasn't through a dealership. So that was helpful because dealerships usually mark up the prices. Um, we actually found out on Craigslist, I believe. And then, yeah, it was just, I forgot what I was saying. Oh, um, and then like- <laughs> so Maybe you can just stop me before I oh, said it. Good. Then. You're good, you're <laughs> good. Um, how many months did it, did you have the loan for like it wouldn't oh. have been very long then yeah so we got the loan in march and i think we had it paid off by july so that helped because we weren't paying that interest why should oh so why should people buy their cars why should people like try to have paid off cars so like you mentioned saving on interest have you noticed any other benefits um well, so you save on the in interest and then also your insurance goes down because you don't have to have full coverage. You can actually just get the liability. Um, and I don't really know. Probably not old enough to get the permanent tag. No, it's not. I just got the permanent tags on my car, so it just became old enough. But um, I've noticed that like it's really nice having a paid off car because like I don't worry about it getting dings. Like, yeah people do I'm like go ahead slam your door into the side I don't <laughs> care <laughs> like it's a cheap car and it's you know paid off I just, I, I'm fine with it <laughs> which is nice from like a stress perspective because like when yeah. it was when it was newer newer years ago I also got my used but it was in school and I remember like worrying about it getting dinged and worrying about the resale value and now that it's like old and like cheap, I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> yeah, it definitely takes the stress level down having it just owned. Plus just the stress of thinking like I have to make this much money this month just to pay for my car. Yeah. Um, I mean, you don't, my, the last car payment that I was paying was, I think it was 350 a month. And at the time I was like, this 350 has to be paid. Like I have to have this car, so I have to pay this money. And it was no big deal at the time. But once I stopped paying that, I was just like, wow, 
I have $300 extra dollars a month that I can actually spend on things that I need. And it was just such a relief. And so I just, I vowed from that moment on that I would never give myself a car payment again if I could. So I, I've had, I've had that moment too, where you're like, I'm rich. My car payment's gone. I am now rich. <laughs> yeah, it feels good when you pay it off. Did you run around like Delilah throwing money on the floor of the house? <laughs> I did not. I wasn't that excited. Oh, okay. I swear, I found it like a ball of crinkled up dollars the other day on the floor. Oh. And I was like, Delilah, <laughs> is that your money? And she's like, oh yeah, I was using my jar for something. <laughs> okay, well, now that you're not, maybe you could put your money back in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Love that. That's good. Yeah, I think the paid off car and like the freed up cash flow every month, I think that is a huge benefit that I don't think people really realize. And like, so, you know, the counter argument would be you're going to pay more in maintenance for older cars, which I think that people that are used to car payments, this is just my theory, are more afraid of car maintenance because, you know, they have to pay that 350 or whatever their car payment is every month. And then if they have a maintenance issue, it's like above that. So it's like really high monthly costs. But if you don't have a monthly car payment, the worry about maintenance is a little less, right? Like you worry right. about it less. Yeah. Um, also, having your vehicle checked out by a trustworthy mechanic before purchasing it instead of an in-house mechanic gives you a lot of peace of mind. So I, my last vehicle I bought from a dealership whose service station is attached to the back of the dealership. And so their mechanics are working for that dealership. And, you know, you want to believe that they're going to be honest about the vehicle, but there's no real way of knowing if they're going to be or not, um, or if they're going to hide things from you. That was my experience. Not all dealership service places are like that, I'm sure. But this particular one was very shysty. Is that the word? Maybe? I think so. Shysty. They were very not trustworthy. Mm -hmm. Um, and so this time around, I was a, I was able to get my friend who's a mechanic to check out the vehicle before I purchased it. And that was really helpful for me, uh, having such a clunker sold to me before I was sold a lemon the, the first time from the dealership. Uh, yeah. So that can bring you some peace of mind. And also, yeah, it costs way less money to fix a small something without a car payment on top of it. Um, I keep I side tangenting. What's that? I'm, I keep like going off on tangents because I'm oh, like. No, that was perfect. Um, okay. Just talking about like, you know, is maintenance a big deal? Like, is it as expensive as everyone claims? And so I like that you kind of pointed out, you know, that you had one car that that legit was a problem. You know, it was the lemon. You had all kinds of costs and, you know, it cost a lot to maintain, to fix it up. But then like, you know, sometimes you'll get a good one and then the maintenance costs are very low or minimal. Um, and I like that you shared that it was, um, I think a good tip is buying private, buying cars from like Craigslist. We just bought our first Craigslist car, a uh, Joe oh. car. Yeah, I, so I didn't know about buying cars private. And I had this belief that like you couldn't buy a cheap car that was reliable. I was like, if it's less than $12,000, it's not reliable. And now I'm like, oh, we bought this car and it's super reliable and it was only a couple thousand dollars. So I think that you and I, I think our parents bought a lot of lemons. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where we get that from because I felt the same way. Yeah. We ended up spending like 15 grand on that Explorer. Oh, really? Like cost to buy it, cost just to get it from Randash and then cost on all of the work that was put into it. Yeah. Most expensive car ever, and it was a piece of crap. <laughs> you said $15,000? Yeah. $15,000 divided by 350. So basically like three years worth of car payments. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't work out, unfortunately, but like- It would be up. Like I've been surprised with my car now. So it's an 06 and it's cost per year. It was like $800 when I was, even when I was driving every day for work. 
Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, that includes like oil changes and everything. Yeah. So that's like three car payments. So it's like I got nine months free. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. When you do the math on the maintenance and car payments and stuff, it really is helpful to just have a car that's paid off. Yeah. Just make sure you have a good mechanic that you can trust. And, you know, like choosing affordable cars. It kind of, that kind of goes in with it, right? Because like if you have a really expensive car, yeah, you want to have it paid off. But it's just it might take a long time compared yeah. to like the sooner you can get it paid off, the less stressful maintenance is. And yeah, anyway, wants and needs, wants and needs. I guess the the one other thing I've noticed that you guys do is kind of just hanging out at home a lot. And like you have like a really nice setup on your like out like your deck outside, and like your yard is really well like set up. It's do you think that that's like one of the ways you save money too is like having a nice setup at home so that way you don't really need to go out as much I do feel like that's helpful yeah I feel like making sure that your home is going to entertain you and make you feel comfortable um definitely makes you feel like going out less even before COVID um we loved hanging out here in the summer we loved our garden we loved you know, we have like a small swimming swimming pool that we would play in and yeah, it's like our own little vacation spot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I do think that that's helpful. Yes. You have to be able to feel comfortable at home. Lots of plants because you're green thumb. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Here's your plant that you gave me. It's looking worse and worse every day. I think it's, oh, no. if you, if you have a new cutting of this, oh. It's so sad. It's really sad. Oh. You can only tell if you look closely. <laughs> Sorry, I killed your plant. I did a really good, I mean, I grew it, it was like two leaves, and I grew it really big, and I was so proud, yeah. and I was like, I'm dead. For, for, so, like, for setting up your house in a way that's enjoyable, like, plants, mm-hmm. um, you have comfortable seating, you have, like, cute lights hung up under your... I don't, oh, oh, um, a pergola. Pergola. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I just yeah, our little yeah. party lunch on our pergola. Yeah. It, it's just those little things, right, that make it more mm-hmm. enjoyable, right? Well, and just small things too for the kids, like chalk and bubbles and things that don't really sound like so much fun for grown-ups, but they're simple and easy for the kids to play with and have fun with. For you were talking about things that make your home feel more inviting, uh, organizing it. <laughs> has been very helpful. I didn't realize until this year with all of our isolation how unorganized my home was. You open up your cupboards and things are falling out of it. Like it's going to be frustrating, you know, and a lot of that stuff we just didn't need. And so going through all of your things every few months is helpful. Uh, And then you can have like a yard sale pile. You can start a yard sale pile. And so then you're you're creating a more inviting space to be comfortable in your home, but you're also creating a way for you to make a little bit of extra money. Mm-hmm. Um, for And then you can spend that money on something fun too, you know? And that's a good way for me to get my kids involved. I let them spend whatever money they make on their stuff when they sell it at a garage sale. Or something. I wonder if that has been part of it too. Like if they know that the stuff that they have is worth stuff, is worth money because they've gotten money out of stuff they've had before. I bet that kind of helps foster that sense of contentment too of like, oh, okay, like I have stuff. Look at this stuff. It's valuable. I have like, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. It's hard to get rid of things sometimes if like I put money into it and haven't used it or if I feel like there's still some value in it. So Or a project you could make with it someday. (laughs) Yes. Projects for sure. Um, So yeah, just like having, I feel like garage sales are a good way to help me like get rid of stuff and, you know, be more organized, have a nicer house and also, yeah, recoup some of the cost. Um, Yeah. And donating is good too, but um, sometimes it's nice to do a little bit of both if you feel really salty about a prop, like stuff that you had for a project. Anyway. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. So having a handy husband is very helpful with saving money. When things around the house break, he is always there to fix it. And 
it's very helpful. Yeah, and you guys, that, so that's another money saving thing, right? DIY, like doing your own house stuff. You guys painted your, your exterior of your house. We did paint our own house, yeah. And that saved us about $4,000. So, oh, <laughs> yeah. Hello. So using your creativity and like your, your own talent that you are just naturally okay at doing um, for bigger projects is definitely helpful. It does take more time, but it also creates that memory. Like when we think back on our house being painted, we'll think about how fun it was or how frustrating it was or how much time it took or how long it took us to finish the trim. Um, how, good but, the beer, how good the beer was while you were painting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. But um, at least we didn't spend $5,000. So, yeah. You mentioned like, using creativity to save money and that is so like that is so near and dear to me. like I love that so much like um like be, I, it's almost like resourcefulness right like um yeah it makes it fun yeah yeah even just like you said like little craft projects like that's a creative like painting rocks that's a creative way to save yeah. money and like the, the store here was our closet door at one point mm -hmm. um in the hallway and I painted it and repurposed it for a backdrop for photo shoots. I love it. I, like, and people don't think of, like, creativity and money as, like, going together or being, like, you know, in, in alignment. But I think that they totally are. So I love that. Definitely. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Courtney, for doing the interview today. Um, where can people find you online? Uh, I have a Facebook page for my photography. It's just facebook.com backslash Grand Oak Imagery. I have grandoakimagery.com also for my photography. And then for my tarot and my art and um, little crafts and things that I like to sell, I have my Instagram page, which is at montana.spirit. Sounds good. Yeah. And I will throw up, a th I hate it when I say that. I will add some, oh, I will, I'm gonna throw up some images. <laughs> I will add images from your channel uh, so that people can, uh, you know, get a sense of the, the really cool things that you do. I love the projects that you do, uh, like your horseshoe, your horseshoe um, dream catchers and oh, your painted, uh, I love your like painted boards and stuff. So um, yeah, and then for photography, you've done photography for me and I share, um, images from that sometimes on my channel. So if, if you guys are local um, here in Bozeman or in Montana, because you travel sometimes for- I do travel. And I will travel out of state um, for a wedding. I'm, I actually have a wedding next spring, COVID pending, <laughs> um, <laughs> in Washington. So I have no problem traveling around the state either. Now that my kids are older and stuff, it's easier for me to do that. That's cool. Yeah, COVID willing, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, <All right>. <laughs> well, thank you, Courtney. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye.